In this video, we start by celebrating Palantir's impressive new multi-year highs. The stock has performed exceptionally well, now ranking as my fourth best performer in the public account, with a 287% gain. It's trailing behind Meta, Tesla, and Elf Beauty, which have gains of 326%, 689%, and 1400% respectively. We'll dive into Palantir stock and what you need to do now and address a couple of key issues, whether to buy the stock now amidst the current excitement and potential FOMO, and how short-term price movements should factor into your decision. Before we dive in, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Now, let's talk Palantir. Despite the recent excitement, Palantir isn't officially in the S&P 500 yet, it will be included starting September 23, 2024. This means today's stock movement isn't due to S&P 500 inclusion, but there are other factors influencing the price. People are buying Palantir stock now in anticipation of its upcoming S&P 500 inclusion, which is set to begin in about two weeks. The idea is that S&P 500 index funds will be required to buy Palantir shares, leading to increased demand. Investors are hoping to buy shares at around $32 to $34 now and sell them at $37 to $40 in the weeks following the inclusion. This strategy can lead to significant short-term price swings. While some investors might benefit from this, it's important to remember that these moves can be volatile. If the stock price rises sharply due to this anticipation, it could also experience a steep decline once the initial excitement fades. Palantir's current market cap is just under $80 billion. If Palantir's stock continues to rise before its S&P 500 inclusion, it could enter the index with a significantly higher market cap, possibly $90 billion or even $100 billion. This would be about double the average market cap of S&P 500 companies. This means a substantial amount of money will be funneled into Palantir when it officially joins the index. Call options for Palantir expiring in late September 2024 have seen dramatic price increases. For example, $32 strike options are up 209%, $34 strike options are up 300%, and others have seen similar jumps. Investors are betting on continued strong buying pressure leading up to and after the S&P 500 inclusion, which is driving up these premiums. The reason for such high premiums is the expectation that Palantir's stock price will rise significantly, potentially reaching or exceeding $40 by late September. For those believing in this projection, paying high premiums for call options might seem like a good bet for a potential 2x or 3x return. However, I'm not personally interested in these short-term trades. While some may profit from this strategy, it can lead to a cycle of risky trading rather than investing. Over time, chasing these short-term gains often ends poorly. On the downside, Palantir's valuation is extremely high. Both forward and trailing price-to-earnings ratios are elevated. Although Palantir's business model, with its strong revenue and profitability growth, justifies higher multiples, such high valuations come with significant risks. As Palantir's stock rises, it may eventually reach a very high market cap, potentially $90 billion or $100 billion, before its official S&P 500 inclusion. This higher valuation could lead to substantial buying from index funds, which might drive the stock price even further. However, there's a risk, if a stock appreciates too rapidly, it pulls future gains into the present. This means that if the stock market or a particular stock rises significantly, it can lead to stagnation or declines in the future as those future gains are already accounted for. For example, if the Dow Jones were to double overnight, it could stagnate or fall for years as the market adjusts. By the way, if you are benefiting from the content so far and want more like this, hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications bell, and comment the word more. Just go ahead and type the word more so I know. Now that you've commented, let's continue. Tesla and Amazon are good examples of this phenomenon. Tesla's stock surged in 2021, pulling future gains forward and leading to a period of stagnation or decline. Similarly, Amazon's stock in 2020 soared due to high expectations, 
but it hasn't delivered proportional returns since, leading to a long period of underperformance. For Palantir, if the stock continues to climb too quickly, it might face a similar fate of stagnation or decline in the future. In the short term, Palantir may benefit from hype and the S&P 500 inclusion, but for long-term growth, it will need to deliver impressive revenue and earnings growth. If Palantir can sustain 30% plus revenue growth and expand earnings significantly, it might climb above $50 in the coming years. For Palantir to maintain its momentum beyond the S&P 500 inclusion, it will need to achieve significant growth. Short-term hype and excitement can drive the stock higher now, but to sustain this momentum, Palantir must deliver exceptional revenue and earnings growth. Specifically, the company would need to push revenue growth to over 30% and significantly boost earnings per share. If Palantir can achieve these growth rates, the stock could rise above $50 and potentially continue climbing. However, buying Palantir stock right now might feel awkward due to the current hype and FOMO, fear of missing out. If you're an educated investor, you might be uncomfortable buying amidst the excitement. Conversely, if you don't buy now, you might be hoping for a lower price, which is a risky strategy since investing based on hope rather than solid analysis can lead to poor outcomes. The best approach in this situation is to avoid being swayed by short-term hype or hope. Instead, focus on a solid investment strategy that doesn't rely on fleeting market trends. This involves making informed decisions based on fundamentals and long-term growth potential, rather than reacting to current market emotions. To determine if Palantir is a good buy, start by projecting its future net income growth. For instance, if you anticipate a 20% annual growth rate, incorporate this into your valuation model. Next, assess the fair P-E ratio for Palantir based on its expected growth relative to the market average. The typical market P-E ratio is around 20. If you expect Palantir to grow at twice the market average, you might use a P-E ratio of around 40. For three times the average growth, a P-E ratio of about 60 is more appropriate. If you foresee four times the average growth, consider a P-E ratio of 80. For growth rates 50% above the average, a P-E ratio of around 30 could be suitable. Calculate Palantir's target share price for future years, such as 2027 to 2028, using these P-E ratios. This will help you gauge whether the stock is undervalued or overvalued in the current market. Finally, compare the target price with Palantir's current share price. If the projected compound annual growth rate, CAGR, meets your investment goals, such as 10%, 15%, or 20%, then the stock might be a good buy, even amid current market excitement. Don't forget that God the creator of heaven and earth is the giver of all wealth. Acknowledge him in your plans and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 If you have watched the whole video until the end, drop a comment like this, I stayed until the end. Just comment that I stayed until the end. When I see this comment, I will give you a heart. There are three more important steps to build wealth from nothing. First, like this video, subscribe and then turn on the notifications bell. If you do this, you highly motivate me to continue bringing to you transformative videos every week. Do not miss out on our future videos full of knowledge and wisdom, all I am asking is your subscription. Thanks for joining us today, your support is appreciated so much. Do not hesitate to share this video to help someone. I recommend that you watch the next video, subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts about today's video. Thank you, see you in the next video by God's grace, we love you, and blessings to you.